Hey folks, Tim Newman with Softlight Studios coming to you once again from now uh, sunny Columbus, Ohio. Weather's awful nice today. I'm thinking a long doggy walk is in my near future. Hey, I got a tutorial for you today in Photoshop that some might say is a bit puzzling. Um, but I think once you see it and once you check it out, you're going to find that it's pretty cool. Take a look at this. Our Photoshop tutorial today is going to be completely based upon this puzzlepattern.jpg file that you see on the Photoshop screen in front of you. We're going to use that file to create a template of sorts where you can use the pattern of the puzzle to overlay it on top of your pixel of choice. And I think it's going to make for a pretty cool completed project. But more importantly than that completed project is the idea that during this tutorial, we're going to explore using multiple layers, using transparency with those layers, the notion of complex magic wand selections and deletions, using background layers to back up the patterns that you create, and even the notion of the difference between having content on a layer and using a layer mask to control what gets displayed on a layer. I think this is going to be a really fun tutorial for you, and certainly it's going to help you with a lot of your Photoshop skills. Now, if you look below in the description, you will see that this puzzlepattern.jpg file is available to you via Google Drive to download. So simply follow that link and you can bring this in file into Photoshop and easily follow along. Now, that being said, certainly would be easy for you to find your own puzzle pattern of whatever design that you liked and basically use the same techniques that I'm using and create a puzzle pattern in the image that you like it to be in. Let's go ahead and get started. Assuming that you have downloaded the puzzlepattern.jpg file or you have identified your own puzzle pattern file and you have it open in Photoshop, your next step is going to be creating a new document, which we can come up here and do via the File New command. Remember, that's a Command N shortcut key on the Mac, a Control N on Windows. And as soon as you do that, you get the new document dialog box. Step number one here, I think this would be great as a 16 by 20 document. And as soon as I type these values in, it dawns on me, I really wanted this to be 20 inches wide and 16 inches in height. No problem. Click on the landscape orientation icon and those values will switch for you. Resolution of 300 pixels per inch, I think makes a lot of sense for a print quality document. RGB color is our color mode. 16 bit as our bit depth. I definitely want a transparent background layer here. I'm going to use these background layers to significant advantage as we work through these projects. So I'll have it start off with that for me. And as is typical for me, my working color space for RGB is the Profoto RGB color profile. Let's go ahead and create that document. So there's our empty document. Step number one, Come over here to your puzzlepattern.jpg tab or whatever your puzzle pattern file is. Click on that to make it the active tab. Come over to the layers control panel and grab, in my case, this one layer and drag it across the screen and come up here and hover on the Untitled One tab. As I come down here into the middle of this document, in order to have this automatically centered for me when I let go of the mouse, I make sure I'm holding the shift key down and I keep it held down and I let go of the mouse first. I get this target document sizing warning that comes up. Now I know this is going to happen, doesn't bother me, but I leave these little warning boxes on so you guys can see them in case they pop up on your installation. I'm just going to say, yep, go ahead and proceed. I'm fine with that. And there is my puzzle pattern laying on top of my blank document. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to rename a few layers. I'm going to come over here to layer one and I'm going to say this is my transparent background. And for whatever reason, I'm typing challenge this week. So transparent background. And this is going to be my puzzle frame. But this is going to be my black 
puzzle frame because we're going to make our puzzle frames in different colors. So now, looking at this later, it's real clear to me which layer is which over here. Next thing I'm going to do with the black puzzle frame layer active, I am going to hit the V key to bring up the move tool. And I know I've got the move tool active because I can see the move tool icon up here with its four arrows on it active. And because I have show transform controls turned on here, I can see the transform frame around my puzzle piece. I'm gonna go ahead and resize this up. As I'm resizing it up, I really wanna let go of the aspect ratio constraint. So I'm holding down the shift key to unlock that. And I like this puzzle to resize from the center equidistant in both directions. So I'm going to hold down the Option key on the Mac, the Alt key on Windows, and you can see that now I'm easily able to resize this puzzle piece and put it where I want on this foreground layer. Now it's not perfectly centered, so we're going to get as close as we can here. And then I'm just going to take my cursor keys and move it around a little bit. So I just went up uh, a pixel and went left to the pixel. And I think that that looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but there's some things we're going to fix here as we move along. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the return key or enter key, whatever you choose to call it. And that is going to commit that change. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to hit the A key to go to the direct selection tool and turn off the move tool and correspondingly that transform control frame that we see there. Now step number one here is to go ahead and make this transparent. We want to get rid of all of the white between all of those black puzzle lines. Fairly straightforward. I'm going to hit the W key to go to the magic wand tool. There's our magic wand tool right here. This is the icon that we're looking for. You want to make sure it looks like that Harry Potter wand, if you will. I'm going to make sure that we turn off contiguous because I want this to sample everything on this layer. And I don't really need it sampling all layers. I just want it to stay on this layer. Wouldn't really matter with the transparent background, but as we work through some subsequent exercises here, that sample all layers might come back and bite us. So let's just go ahead and turn it off now. So with a tolerance of 32, let's go ahead and click and see how we do. Pretty good looking selection. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that does a pretty good job. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit the delete key and that's going to clear out that puzzle frame and it's going to make it look like it's transparent because, well, it is transparent. And now we're seeing the transparency in the background. And we're going to go ahead and hit the Command D on the Mac, or the Control D on Windows, and undo our selection. Now at this point, it's pretty clear that we can easily see our puzzle background, but it would be nice if we could have a white background in there that we could turn on and off so that we had a much clearer view when we're working of what we're doing. So we're going to come down here to this transparent background, and we're going to come down here and make it active by clicking on it in the Layers Control Panel. And with that layer active, we're going to click on this icon right here, which creates a new layer for us. And it will create it right above the transparent background layer. Okay, good. We have our new layer. I want to make this a white background. So we're going to double click here on the layer one name strip, and we're going to rename this white background. Now that we have that named, and that layer is active, we can tell by our light gray strip here in the layers control panel. Let's come over here, grab the paint bucket tool with the G key. You can see I got the gradient tool first. So I'm going to hit it again. Ah, there's the paint bucket tool. That's the icon I'm looking for. Right now, if I look over here on the left, I can see that my foreground color is black and my background color is white. I want to flip those around. I want white to be my foreground color. Rather than reselecting it, I can just hit the X key. It works on the Mac or on Windows, and you'll notice immediately those two colors have traded places. Now if I click here with the paint bucket, I have a white background. At this point, you're probably scratching your head going, uh, Tim, we just got rid of the white background, and then you put it back in. Why did we do that? Well, here, check out the difference. Now I can make this background go away. So if I need to see things clearer, I can. If that's in the way, 
I can turn it off. Pretty simple transition there. For right now, we're going to leave that white background on because it makes it real easy to see what we're doing. Now, one of the things that I think here when I look at this is I think, well, that frame is nice, but it's not as bold as I would like it to be. And quite frankly, it doesn't look like it's in a real deeply saturated black. It looks more like a grayscale to me. I'm going to come over here and just zoom in on a corner. Ah, uh, Sirius decided she's going to help. I'm going to come over here and zoom in on a corner. And I'm going to grab my magic wand tool again. And I'm going to make sure that I select just right here on the black. And you can tell I missed it because I got another area besides that. So I'm going to click right in that same area again that undoes the selection. And I really want to get just the black here. So it takes a little bit of adjusting. Ah, have you seen what I've done? I see it now. It took me two times and I was thinking, wow, I was missing this each time. Easy enough to do. I'm sure you've done it a bunch of times. and I caught myself doing it here. I wasn't getting my black puzzle selection. I was just getting the whole layer. And as I look over here at the layers control panel, my white background layer is still active. I'm never going to get the puzzle frame that way. I'm on the wrong layer. Let's make our puzzle frame layer active. Let's do a Command D or Control D on Windows to get rid of that selection. Now let's try reselecting that black frame. Way more successful there. Definitely happy with that. Now as I'm looking at it, I don't really feel like as I'm looking around the puzzle frame here, I've got everything selected. I've got a lot of it selected, but not exactly what I want. And I know I don't have the whole layer selected because I can see there's no frame here on the outside. So it's not like I missed a black area. It's just that the tolerance was a little too tight. Let's go ahead and do a Command D on the Mac, Control D on Windows to turn that off. Let's come up here and make our tolerance 64. And let's come back here and try resampling on the black here again. Now work your way around, take a look at that. That selection is much better. We definitely have all of the black nicely selected now in this puzzle frame. Now I'm going to do two things here. One is I'm going to come up here to select and to modify and I'm going to go ahead and expand my selection. And I think one pixel would be plenty. And you'll notice the selection just gets a little fatter all the way around. That's going to give us a little more solid pieces, or at least solid lines, if you will. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that paint bucket tool again with the G key. And I need my color to be black this time, and currently it's the background. So I'm going to hit the X key so those guys can trade places again, and black can be my foreground color. Now, right here inside one of these selection lines, I'm going to click right here with my pointer. And you notice that will fill in with black. And if I do a Command D or a Control D to undo that selection, those lines are a lot bolder, a lot more solid. I like that a lot better, and I think it looks really good. Let's do a Command Zero on the Mac, Control Zero on Windows to make this fit back on the screen. And real quickly, let's just turn off our white background and see it over a transparent layer. Look how much bolder that is. I think that really has done a nice job. Now what I would like to do is you can see we've got this kind of white frame around the outside. Now I could resize this layer and make it come right up to the edges, but what I really think I'd like is just a little bit thicker border around this puzzle piece. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to zoom out just a tiny little bit here. I'm going to come up here to view new guide layout and you can see we have some margin guides that were here before. Let's go ahead um, let's go ahead and build a layer that's just like this. So we're going to go with no columns, no rows. We'll do a margin of zero all the way around. And we're going to clear out existing guides. So we're getting exterior margins around this document. That should work really, really well. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back in and do view new guide layout again. And this time, let's try making a really small margin. Something at about 0.0... .0 Let's go with 7.5. That works pretty well. I like that. That's hitting the interior, looking up here at the top, and I think that'll work out all right. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we have it all selected. We're going to do a Command-C on the Mac. That's a Control-C on Windows. And I'm going to tab to the next margin field, and I'm going to do a Command-V on the Mac, Control-V on Windows. 
and I'm basically pasting in that same value all the way around. And as I'm looking at it, I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. And I'm not going to clear existing guides this time. I want to leave those there. So now I've got two margins. Oops, accidental selection or fill of everything. My bad. Uh, Command D, uh, or sorry, Command Z or Control Z to undo that. Um, now that I have that uh, two sets of guidelines out there, I'm going to come up and grab the rectangular marquee tool with the M key. That's this little guy right here. If you get any other tool other than the rectangular marquee tool, just keep hitting that M key until it comes up. Some of you may have to add in the shift key if you haven't turned off your add shift key to tool switch option. So I am going to do a command zero to make this a little bit bigger because these guides are pretty close together. That's a control zero on Windows. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make sure that I'm at the interior upper left intersection. I'm going to click and start dragging and I'm going to make sure that I go down here to the interior lower right intersection. So I've got a selection of basically the entire interior of the puzzle, but it's at those interior guides in the upper left and in the lower right. So we know that's exactly where we want it to be. Now what I want to do is I want to invert that selection. Currently I have the interior selected. We want the exterior selected, that little thin strip around the outside of the picture. Easiest way to do that, do a select inverse that inverts the selection now if you remember your shortcut keys that's a shift command i on the mac that's a shift control i on windows so we're going to go ahead and do that and now you can see we have this nice little thin selection that's going to work out to be a really great border around the outside of this document at this point what we'd like to do is we'd like to fill in this marching ants selection that's around the outside frame of this document and I want to show you a couple things here because this is an area where some people get tripped up that are new to Photoshop. So I'm going to zoom in here. So I've, I've got a pretty decent view of my selection here and I'm zoomed in a little bit. And obviously what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to grab the paint bucket tool with the G key. And I'm going to just confirm real quickly that black is indeed my foreground color. And it is, so I should be good to go. So I'm going to come in here and uh, I'm going to click right in here. And you see we get the little uh, spinning icon indicating that the Photoshop's doing something, but then nothing gets filled in. And then one might assume, well, if I take my tolerance here, which is 64, and I crank it up to 255, I got to be good then, right? So I'll come over here and click right on top of this black area inside my marching ant selection. And I get the little spinning beach ball again, and still nothing. And, and you're now thinking, I got the maximum tolerance here. What's going on? Well, what's going on is there is transparency inside of this selection. So if I come over here and click on the transparency, then all of the transparent sections fill in as well. So you can see we had black sections and transparent sections. And, and now as I'm working my way around the document, I can see, aha, all that transparent is gone and all the black is merged in with the transparent and I'm good. I want you to remember that both with the magic wand tool and with this paint bucket tool that even when you're at a tolerance of 255 as we were here with the paint bucket tool, tolerance uh, does not automatically include transparency when you are clicking on a pixel that already has values in it. So anytime that you have a selection and there is content in that selection and transparency in that selection, you're going to have to select both. You notice I didn't have to do a modifier key or anything like that. The paint bucket tool is always in additive mode. So that worked out just fine. But I, I wanted you to see that because that's something that people get caught up on a lot. Now that we have our frame filled in, let's go ahead and do a command zero on the Mac control zero on Windows to get back to what we would refer to as fit size. I'm going to do a command D on the Mac control D on Windows to make that selection go away. And then I'm going to do a command semicolon on Windows, control semicolon on a Mac. And then my guides are gone as well. And now I think you can see that we've taken that puzzle pattern JPEG file that we've brought in. We've made it fit the frame really well. I mean, it's, it's right up at the edges of the document. We've given it that little bit thicker um, fill to the lines and we've given that nice uh, frame around it. And I think it looks really, really great. This would be a good time 
to just turn on our white background and check that out. And I think that looks nice and clean. I'm real happy with where we're at. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go ahead and make a white version of this frame. You, you never know if we were putting a relatively dark picture in here, maybe a, a dark black and white picture underneath here, we wouldn't necessarily want a dark black frame on top of it. It wouldn't stand out very well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that's as easy as coming over here and making sure that black puzzle frame is still active. You're doing a Command J on the Mac, Control J on Windows, and you can see we now have a black puzzle frame copy. While I'm over here, I'm going to double click on the layer strip name. I'm going to get rid of the word copy. I'm going to double click on the word black, and I'm going to type in E white. I don't know what an E white is, so we'll just go back with white. So there we go. We got white puzzle frame. Now we got two puzzle frames on. We haven't changed the, the color of this one yet. We haven't made it white yet, but we have one behind it. Let's just go ahead and turn it off so that's not visible. And now we only have the one on that we want to work on. This now gets a lot simpler because it's going to be real easy to change this from black to white. We don't have any of that differing levels of grayscale or that funny transparency in the frame. It's all pretty solid now. So now if we hit W to select the magic wand tool and we make sure that we get right on the intersection of one of these guys here. And I'm going to zoom in to make it easy so I don't miss it. All right. I'm going to click here and, and you can see the puzzle frame, all of the lines in here. If we move around, albeit a little slower so you can see what I'm doing. You can see we got really nice clean selections there. I'm going to go to the paint bucket tool with the G key again. And we got black as our foreground, white as a background. Let's hit the X key to uh, swap those with one another, click anywhere inside that selection. And of course, I missed inside the selection the first time I clicked. There you go. White puzzle frame, as simple as that. That's pretty slick. Let's do a Command D on the Mac, Control D on Windows, and then uh, Command Zero on the Mac, Control Zero on Windows to make it fit back in the frame. There we go. Looks really good, except for if I come down here and turn on the white background, my frame instantly disappears. Um, so this is easy as just making another background down here and we'll just click on the create new layer icon. You can see we have a layer one here. Let's go ahead and double click on that layer name and call it black. I don't know, typing is not my specialty today. Background. Let's grab the paint bucket tool. I guess it's already active because we just finished using it. We're gonna switch foreground and background again. So black is now our foreground color. That's the X key and click anywhere as long as that black background layer is active, boom. Now you got a white puzzle frame on a black background. Now ultimately, when you put a picture in here, you may not be using the backgrounds at all. The picture may be completely covering up the background. I certainly would expect that and not be surprised by it at, at the least. But for working on it, it makes it real easy to see how that frame looks and how clean it is. And if I want to see the black frame, fine, turn off the white frame, turn on the black frame, turn off the white background, or turn off the black background, turn on the white background. So this is one of the reasons why I always do these differing backgrounds in here because I can easily switch between whatever set I want to switch to. So I'm going to turn the white one back on, turn the black one back off. I'm going to put my black background back on. One of the things that I do a lot here, it's not a requirement for this tutorial, but you can see I have the black background still active. I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on the transparent background. Now you can see all three of those layers are selected. If I come down here to the bottom of the layers control panel and I click on this little folder icon, that is create a new group and anything that's currently selected gets to be in that group by default. So you can see they all got made into a group. I'm going to double click on the label group one and I'm going to call this backgrounds. Hey, I spelled it right the first time. We're making progress. Got to like that. So that's our little backgrounds group back there. And you can see I can turn all of them off real easily. Or I can turn it on and say, well, I only want the white one on. Whatever. So pretty straightforward. Um, real easy to set that up like that. And that's kind of standard thing for me to do. We are going to do one more thing here that I think is going to be pretty cool. We're going to make the white puzzle frame active. So that's now our active layer. I am going to grab the magic wand tool with the W key and confirm, yes, I got the Harry Potter one. And I, again, I want to be careful and click on the intersection. Yep, we definitely have the puzzle frame itself selected, not the black background. We can confirm that, especially looking at the outside edge of the frame here. But the other way, if you want to confirm it real quickly, remember when we move the wand tool around, see the minute it changes 
to that triangle with the dashed rectangle underneath it, that's Photoshop telling you you're inside the selection, you're outside the selection. You're inside the selection, you're outside the selection. That's a really cool feature, and very few people know that's there, but that can really help you when you're trying to differentiate, hey, what's inside the selection, what isn't. With this selected, what I would like to do is I would like to come down here and add an adjustment layer, and that's our little, um, what I refer to as the yin and yang symbol here. Um, and I click on that, that is an adjustment layer. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this with a solid color. And I'll come in here and say, you know, I think my solid color here would be great if it were this green color. There you go. Now, because we had an active selection, that active selection automatically becomes a layer mask if that feature is turned on, which it is by default. So you'd have to turn that off for it not to work. And, and then that automatic layer mask automatically attaches itself to that adjustment layer. And the adjustment layer in this case is that green icon that you see here. That's a, a solid uh, color adjustment layer. And if I double click on this little colored icon here, I can say, you know what, I really need to have a purple puzzle frame. And, and now you can see by virtue of using the selection and turning it into a layer mask, real easy to come in here and change this. Okay, before we wrap up here, there's another thing I want to show you, and I'm going to, I'm going to show you a couple twists on it. Um, I have gone out and opened up um, this red portrait.jpg file. Uh, doesn't matter. You can pick any picture that you have and, and use the picture for doing that, but that's the one I'm going to use. And uh, I'm going to come back here to Untitled 1 for a second, and uh, I'm going to just confirm color fill is, in fact, our active layer. So we're at the very top of the document, which means anything that we drag in should get inserted on a layer above this one. So we're going to come over here to the red portrait.jpg file. I'm going to click on the background layer strip and not let go, and I'm dragging this across here into the Untitled 1 document. We'll get down here anywhere in the middle of the document. Before I let go of the mouse, I'm holding onto the Shift key, and I'm keeping that Shift key held down. Let go of the mouse first, shift key second. We're getting that document size warning again. We've seen that enough times we're pretty comfortable with it, so no big deal. Now, <clears throat> before I show you what I came here to show you, the one thing I'm going to do is resize this document. I'm going to hit the V key to grab our move tool here, as you can see, and I'm holding down with the mouse and dragging out. Remembering, of course, yep, got to hold that shift key down to unlock the aspect ratio and might as well hold that option key down on the Mac, alt key on Windows to get that to size out from the center equidistant. So there we go. Our picture is now covering our frame here. We'll go ahead and hit the return slash enter key and then we'll hit the A key to go to the direct selection tool and turn that transform frame off. Now, one of the things that you have probably learned how to do with some of these types of things is to right click on this layer and say, all right, create a clipping mask. But that's not the result you expected, I'm sure. And the reason that we have this result is this layer is now being clipped by this layer and it's being clipped by this solid color adjustment fill here. But that solid color adjustment fill is being clipped by this right here. And in all reality, what it's doing is it's taking the center of this space and it's turning it transparent, right? So you can see, in fact, if I turn the backgrounds layer off, that this mask is not only blocking the solid color fill from in the interior of the puzzle pieces, but it's also blocking the picture from the interior puzzle pieces, which is not necessarily wanted behavior at this point, but it is expected behavior. And in fact, you'll come to love the fact that when you apply clipping layer to a mask like this, that the mask applies to all the things that are clipped into that layer. That's a really cool feature. So we should release that clipping layer, which is as easy as right clicking on the layer strip somewhere and saying, release the clipping mask. And then you're like, well, all right, now how do I get this to work? Well, this is pretty simple really, because this mask is creating a show through to layers underneath it. I just got to take this down there and put it underneath it. And then you're like, oh, got it. And here's what's really cool. If I come up here and click on this layer and then I double click on my solid color fill dialog picker here, I can actually um, come over here and sample a color out of the picture. I can say, you know what, I'd, I'd like it to be that flesh tone or I'd like it to be the color of her hair or maybe that uh, light pinkish color in her lips. Hard telling what you'd want to use, but 
you can see it's pretty easy now to adjust that and make it match up really well with the colors that are in the image below it. Correspondingly, if I turn this off and I drag this down here, um, now it's underneath the white puzzle frame. And if I turn off the white puzzle frame and I turn on the black puzzle frame and I drag this down here, then it's underneath the black puzzle frame. Now I want you to see one more thing and then we're going to get pretty close to wrapping up here. I'm going to take this picture back up here above the black puzzle frame and I'm going to create it as a clipping mask here. And you notice I get the same concern here in that the clipping mask is based on the solid or layer contents here um, that are in the layer that the clipping mask doesn't work with the transparency areas of the layer. So we're going to stop there. I think that's giving you some things to think about. I'm going to go ahead and release this clipping layer just so you can see this back here and I'll put this back underneath here so you get the finished look. What I would recommend you do is save this. I'm just going to do a file save as and I'll put it on my computer and I'm going to put it on my home folder and I'll call this um, puzzle example 01. That's probably a pretty good name for it. Make sure that you save the layers because we'll want to come back to that and go ahead and leave your color profile embedded to turn that on. So now we have this document saved out here, the hard drive, we can get to it later. And the reason that we have this saved out here on the hard drive so we can get to it later is because there's going to be a part two to this tutorial where I show you some tricks that we can add in to make it so we can use clipping masks and use them in pretty cool ways. Well, there you have it, your very own puzzle template in Photoshop. And while that's cool, I think the really neat part about this tutorial is you get to learn a lot about the magic wand tool, about adjusting selections, about how backgrounds and layers interact with one another, even using this as a layer mask instead of using it as content on a layer, all of which I think are pretty cool. And then last but not least, adding in clipping layers in your own image to it. I hope you found this fun and enjoyable. In the meantime, I hope you're staying sheltered at home, safe and healthy. Can't wait to get out there and start shooting with you guys out in the wild again. And remember, as we always say, learning equals skills, practice equals mastery. We'll see you out there.